Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. I'm your host, Jerron Harrington, back there with another video. And today, we are finally getting into What If Tondro Had Venom Demon Slayer The Movie Mugen Train. The last time I made a video on this series was back in January of 2022 on january 21st this channel has come a long way since then so to say that i am proud would be a bit of an understatement but as always i want to thank everyone who supports the channel because like i always say i cannot do it without you you make the channel grow you make the core grow so, now that I'm finally doing a video that I said I was going to do for multiple months at a time, and I kept delaying it for a lot of reasons, we're now finally getting into the movie portion of this series. But, that does leave me with a few questions. For one, am I going to cover Season 2 of Demon Slayer? Well, honestly, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. As we're winding down with the series of videos that we have on the channel right now before we get into the major crossover events, we're kind of on the final home stretch, if you will. I already have everything lined up for what I'm going to be making and what I'm going to be doing going forward. But honestly, we do have a lot of series that are going to be coming to an end rather soon. So could I squeeze in season two? I could, but that's only if you guys want it, and that would cover the Entertainment District arc or the Red Light District arc as it's known. So in the comment section below, let me know if you want Season 2 of What If Tondro Had Venom. If you want Season 2, then I will add Season 2 to my slate of videos and we'll get started on that. But honestly, that's really up to you guys, because after I finish this slate of videos and everything, I'm going to be taking a bit of a break before we come back with a new host of stories. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you want season two, let me know down in the comment section below if you guys want that. And if you do, I'll get started on it right away. But without further ado, we're going to get into today's special movie event. So, as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Tanjiro, along with his sister Nezuko, and his close friends and allies in Zenitsu and Inosuke, would have finally boarded the Mugen train as it left the station. Their mission? To meet with the flame Hashira, Rengoku, and join in his mission to hunt down the demon who was the cause of having over 40 people go missing on this very train. As they boarded, Inosuke was enamored with this new fine form of construction. As being a primitive individual, he wasn't used to the more modern side of technology of their world. Something as simple as a train left him astounded. Before long, they would manage to find where Rengoku was sitting, enjoying his dinner. The ever ecstatic Hashira was happy to see them, to learn that they too had been assigned to help in the case. As they sat down all together, Venom would become rather hungry once again. He would ask if they had anything worth eating on this train, to which Rengoku would explain that they had a very good variety on the menu. 
Of course, Tandra reached for one, but a black tendril beat him to it, Venom basically skimming through to find what he wanted, and he found the section he was looking for. Duck. Duck of all kind. Sesame duck. Rotisserie duck. Fried duck. Duck boiled. Duck in all shape and fashion. In this universe, rather than having chocolate as a steady diet, opposed to eating human or demon, Venom found love for duck. He would eat duck in any way, shape, fashion, or form. He would even snatch up raw ducks, waddling on the side of the road, and eat them. Of course, Tondro didn't mind duck, but at the same time, if he ate it, it wasn't really so much for him, more so than it was for Venom. On Venom's free time, whenever Tondro was walking about, Venom would basically just list off all of his forms of duck. He believed that he would one day achieve his ultimate goal of finding every duck recipe in the world and trying them all. And he would scour to the ends of the earth to get them, whether Tondro wanted to or not. The Flame Hashira was quite enamored at the pair as they seemed to be very close with one another. Of course, Tandro had his own questions, one in particular about a sword technique. Well, not really so much a sword technique, as it was actually a dance, a dance that his father did during the times of the New Year. It was the Dance of Fire, but when Tandro used this dance, it worked similar to that of the different forms of breathing techniques in the sword arts that they use as demon slayers. And with Rengoku being the flame Hashira and fire being kind of his thing, Tandro wanted to learn more about the flame style and more specifically if his father's dance had anything to do with it. Of course, Rengoku wasn't entirely sure about it as the dance wasn't of anything in his memory, but he believed that if he could provide him any answers, then he would be able to do so in the future. But in the meantime, he had questions of his own, about Venom, or more specifically just what it was. As the other Hashiras had come to learn, Venom wasn't a demon, but he wasn't human either. He was something entirely different. Venom would then take over, as he wanted to speak for himself. He explained what the symbiotes were and where they had come from, more so being beings from space that had to bond with the host in order to survive. Rengoku was enamored with this news, and he asked if there were other symbiotes out there that could have potentially come to their world. However, as far as Venom was concerned, he was the only symbiote on this planet. If he was correct, the others tragically died. Hearing this, Tandro felt more akin to Venom. The idea of losing all of his close brethren, he understood that feeling and sentiment. All the same, Rengoku liked having the three young swordsmen before him, and he was even growing to have a feeling for Nezuko as well, coming to view her as more than a demon, as she hadn't harmed any humans, and he had sympathy for the sibling duo. They sat together on the train and discussed many things. Before long, they had all managed to fall asleep, However, unknown to the group, this was the works of the dream demon himself, Inmu, the lower one of the twelve moons of Muzen Kibutsuji. This was his chance now to prove himself to his master. His plan was foolproof. He would use the train to lure in his victims, drowning them into a never-ending sleep, and then using his own henchmen, they would be assigned to go into the dreamscape, where they would find an individual's spiritual core. 
If you could destroy the core, you destroyed the human. And for Enmu, he believed that this would give him his victory. Tondro and his companions, now fast asleep, would all dream wonderful dreams. For Rengoku, he reminisced on his past with his younger brother and the disapproving of him becoming a Hashira by his father who was once a swordsman. Zenitsu envisioned living a quiet life with Nezuko. Inosuke imagined himself being an adventuring leader. But for Tanjiro, he found himself back home in the snowy mountains. But even more so, he found himself with his family once again. He found himself surrounded by the ones whom he thought he had lost long ago. And for a moment he couldn't believe where he was. He couldn't believe that this was his reality. And it didn't take long for him to learn of the truth. You see, Venom was immune to the demon arts. Mainly because he was not human and he could not fall prey. As a result, Venom would appear before Tanjiro. So, it seems you understand as well as I do, partner. This world, it's not real. None of it is. Most likely, you and your friends were put under the control by one of those demon birds. But if this is a dream, then we symbiotes have a hive mind. We have existed for millions of years. And we have existed across many different realities. We are far beyond all comprehension. You must wake into reality and escape this illusion. Do not let yourself be fooled, Tanjiro. Trust me. The more you stay here, the more you will only be swallowed up by your own desire. You must come to face that truth. As Tanjiro started to realize the painful reality of his dream, he would try to awaken himself however he would be unable to until he was instructed by a vision, the vision of his father. His father would thank Venom for watching over his son and his daughter, although Venom would reply that he only did it for his own self-interest. However, the father knew otherwise and was still grateful none the same. He explained that the only way out was to kill yourself in the dream. Hearing this, Tanjiro struggled with what he should do. Of course, he knew what he needed to do and it was a no-brainer. And Venom, whether Tanjiro wanted to or not, was going to get them out of this. However, before leaving, Tanjiro would stop to visit his family one more time. Even if it was just a dream, an illusion by the enemy. At the very least, he wanted to take advantage of this moment. He hugged his mother and his other siblings. He promised that he would make things right. And without hesitation, he would take his own life in that moment. Tanjiro would reawaken on the train. Thankfully, his sister Nezuko was able to help. Using her own demon blood arts, she was able to sever the connection of the intruders trying to get into the mindscape of the other demon slayers, as well as helping to awaken the other passengers on the train. Realizing now that they were under attack and in fear of Enmu, 
Tondro, along with the others, would help take out the intruders, keeping them safe in the meanwhile, as they tried to figure out how to take out the enemy before them. As they made their way to the various carts of the train, Tondro would be the first to move to the roof, attempting to confront Enmu. Enmu was overjoyed, seeing the Hanafuda earrings, the ones of which his master, Muzin, had asked for, the one being that he had desired to have killed. The ensuing battle would begin, as Tandro attempted to get closer to Enmu. Enmu would reveal that he had fused himself with the train, and that no matter how many times he tried to destroy his body, in the end it would never be enough. Along with the others, Rengoku would take lead of the situation, instructing Inosuke and Tandro to look for Enmu's neck, while he, Nezuko, and Zenitsu would stay back and protect the other passengers. Tandro and Inosuke would nod in understanding as Tandro entered into his black oni form, the symbiote crawling over his skin, the black mask and the solid white eyes appearing as both he and Inosuke would blitz through the carts immediately. It didn't take Tandro or Inosuke long to find where Inmu's neck bone was making it to the engine room. One of the guards, who was still caught in a trance, would try to attack them. However, Tandro would use one of the symbiote tendrils to easily knock him out and stop him in his tracks. Once they had found what they were looking for, Enmu would attempt to defeat Tandro by placing him under the trance over and over again. However, despite all of his attempts, Tandro would not stop in his movement. As Venom explained, even if he could knock out Tandro, Venom was still in control, and he was immune to the blood demon arts. As a result, Tandro would use a combination technique of his wire breathing as well as his venom breathing. He would use venom breathing fifth form double critical along with his wire breathing the first form wire surface splash being increased by the double critical along with Inosuke using his beast breathing they would manage to slice through the neck bone, that being the engine room itself, seemingly killing Inmu and derailing the train in its tracks. In the aftermath of the destruction, Inmu would lament in his failures, having been unable to defeat any of the demon slayers, realizing that the one in particular that his master wanted to kill was a lot more stronger than he gave him credit for. Tandro survived, with hardly any wounds to him for the most part. He and Venom had truly grown together as partners. Along with the others, Rengoku would arrive and tell them that everything was fine. Not a single life was lost on this train. And now, it seemed as though their mission was complete. As they continued on in conversation, all seemed well, that was, until a large explosion could be heard from behind them. There, a humanoid-like figure would stand. He was of pale skin with blue markings all over his body, his hair a mixture of pink and blue, as his eyes glowed a golden aura. In one of his eyes, they were not a pupil, but were instead a number. Realizing 
that who they were standing before was one of the twelve Kibutsuji. And it was none other than the upper rank third himself, Akaza. He was surprised with how effortlessly they were able to defeat Enmu. Although then again, he shouldn't have been so shocked. After all, the lower ranks, they were always so pathetic. But these guys, they had some backbone. Displaying his horrifying strength as he entered into a fighting stance, he offered them the chance for a real challenge. Tandro would stand ready to fight. However, Rengoku would tell him to stand down, stating that he would be the one to take on this foe. As Rengoku unsheathed his sword, he used flame breathing second form, rising scorching sun, dashing straight towards the demon, cutting through his arms, slicing them in half as he would leap backwards attempting to behead the demon. However, the demon would reassemble himself quite quickly and complement his nicherine blade while licking his blood from his own arm. Lamenting over the fact that he was one of the few who had actually managed to injure him, being of upper rank, he would say that this battle was going to be everything he could have possibly have wanted, and even more so, as he eyed towards Tandro, He would remark that you were a lot like the Red One. This catching the attention of Venom specifically as he questioned who the Red One was. Akaza was surprised. They had no idea of the Red One's existence. A true demon amongst the humans. It sucked to be them then. All the same, the battle between both he and Rengoku would continue, the two happily responding to one another as they continued on in their battle, the battle not only just being that of a physical fight, but a fight of their moral ideals. Akaza remarked his reason for being a demon, why he gave himself over to this power, because in the end, he wanted the power to live on forever. What he truly despised most about his own humanity was the fact that it was something that would one day fade from him. What was the point of being strong if it could be taken away from you? You spend all your life gaining power, growing in strength only to grow old and die. Your mind could be as sharp as ever you could be as fast as ever before, but one day it would slip from you. You would fall out of your prime. He looked down on such weakness. However, Rengoku believed in something different, of the beauty in humanity itself. The fact that things don't last forever. There was beauty in death, because it meant you had to cherish for what you had, never knowing when it would end for you. Before Kaza, he believed in the way of the demon. He had been training for hundreds of years to become stronger and stronger, and he could have only gained this strength by giving over his humanity, a small price to pay in his opinion. Rengoku, however, would believe that growing old and dying was the way of human in. It was something that made every aspect of life more precious. It made what humans fought for all the more valuable. What was there to be gained fighting for something that would never fade? It would lose all sense of purpose all sense of meaning and reasoning. Akaza would be disappointed in this answer, 
from what he had seen from Rengoku, he would have been someone he would have loved to fight for all eternity. But if this was the path that he was going to choose, then he was going to show the difference between the two of them. Akaza would get into a stance, lowering both of his knees, holding back one fist while extending his other hand forward, unleashing his technique, one that he had developed. This was the fruits of his labor. This was the price of his humanity. He had developed destructive death, compass needle. Akaza remarked that if Rengoku would not become a demon, then this would be the end for him. Rengoku, however, was not one to go down easily, readying himself as he used flame breathing first form, unknown fire. The two attacks would collide with one another once again, Tanjiro and Venom both taking note, watching just how fast they were moving, at speeds that even they couldn't have kept up with a, their eyes. As they clashed with one another over and over again, Akaza would leap into the air, stating that none of the Hashira he had killed had ever used flames, and that none of them had ever agreed to his invitation to become a demon. Akaza remarked that for this he had pity, because out of all of them, Rengoku was the one that showed the most potential, and that it truly saddened him to see someone with such talent decline such an offer. One should want to maintain and hold on to their youth and their strength, because that was all we had left. However, Rengoku would not fall into despair. He would maintain and hold on to his way. The two would collide once again in another flurry of attack. As they watched on, Venom would remark that the battle was already one-sided as it was. Tondro asked what Venom meant by this, and he explained, in the end, the demon had far more power, far more stamina, more than even the most trained of a human body could take. They watched as the two warriors met with another collision. Akaza using the destructive death air type, while Rengoku would counter with the flame breathing fourth form, blooming flame undulation. Akaza striking with his fist so quickly, punching the very air, moving at a fraction of a blink. Rengoku, sadly, was unable to keep up with him to a certain extent as they fought. It became perfectly clear the difference between the two. And it wasn't for a fact of Rengoku not being powerful, it was simply the weakness of being human. His body just simply was not meant to keep up with someone of Akaza's nature, and it was starting to show. The more and more they continued on in their battle, the more it seemed as though it was going in Akaza's favor. However, Rengoku was not one to go down so easily. Using flame-breathing third form, blazing universe, he would create a shallow wound near Akaza's shoulder. Akaza was able to heal it instantly and continue on in the fight. However, Akaza would use another destructive air attack, assaulting Rengoku and causing him much damage. As they continued on, as the battle continued to rage, the two would deliver multiple attacks to one another over and over again. However, because of this, it truly showed the disparaging difference between the two. Akaza could heal from his injuries. However, Rengoku, he could not. 
All the same, Tanjiro became worried for his friend, for his mentor. He had to do something, but Venom would stop him in his tracks. He explained that with his skill, the way he was now, he wouldn't stand a chance. But Tanjiro asked what he was supposed to do. They couldn't just do anything. Standing by and doing nothing, it was only going to get worse from here. Venom understood this. And he knew what they were ultimately going to have to do in the end. As they watched on, Rengoku would prepare himself as he used his family's most powerful technique, flame breathing, as Storic Art, Ninth Form, Rengoku. Akaza would ready himself as he countered with destructive death, annihilation. A blaze of blue and a blaze of red colliding with one another once again. Rengoku had put everything he had into his strike, believing that if he could move fast enough, he could slice off the demon's head. However, before he could get all the way, Rengoku would find himself impaled in the stomach by Akaza. Akaza was impressed by Rengoku's strength, by how far he was able to go. But all the same, in the end, this was the difference between the two. It was at that moment that Venom told Tanjiro to grab his sword. Tanjiro did. And he felt as if his body was empty now. He felt the symbiote leaving his very essence. As he realized what had happened, his sword was now entirely black. And Venom simply yelled at him to throw it. Without any hesitation, Tandro would throw the sword towards the two fighting. Rengoku thought that this was going to be the end for him. He didn't think that there could be a way out. He had used his best attacks, and in the end, it still wasn't enough. He was preparing to try and go for another hit, even if it wasn't going to do much. The two fighters, however, would be stopped as they heard something flying towards them. Rengoku seeing that it was a sword he would hear something yelling at him to take hold of it, to reach for it. He wasn't sure of why, but he felt as though he could trust the voice telling him to do so. Rengoku reached for the blade and took hold of it. As he did, he would feel something graft over him instantly. The black ooze of the symbiote. The symbiote covered him and Akaza could not believe what was happening. As he felt Rengoku's sword buried within his neck, Rengoku would smile. As the symbiote washed over him, Akaza would pull his hand from out of his stomach, the symbiote covering him entirely, Venom having to work overtime to undo the damage that had been done. What? What's going? Now's not the time to ask questions. Just know that I am your guardian angel. My guardian angel? Yes. You are a fine warrior, Rengoku. One of honor with nothing lacking. But this, this is not a place for you to die. What do you mean? You see, I can make the difference. Do not listen to the words of this demon. One who betrayed everything he stood for for his own selfish gains. You've seen what I can do with someone like Tandro. With Tandro, 
The two of you do work together. Yes. But even still, I would not allow him to get involved with this fight. And I believe you know why. Are you saying that if you and Tandro fought this being, you would still lose? Yes. But it is not because the boy is not skilled. This is just something he simply is not ready for. You, on the other hand, have the skill. But what you lack is the power. A power that I can give you. You have been gifted a second chance. Now it is time to make the most of it. What's going on? Just what the hell are you? Rengoku would lift his head. His eyes glowing a fiery red. The symbiote covering him from head to toe. As he kicked back at the demon, sending him flying a great distance. As he slowly stood, the damage that had once been done was now healed. As Rengoku raised his sword that began to be set ablaze. We are Venom. In a dash of fury once more. Rengoku and Akaza would meet one another in battle once again. But this time, things were different. Venom fed off of his host. He was filled with fighting spirit, with determination higher than any he had ever felt before. Rengoku began to hit once again. But this time, the attacks were doing much more damage much more than Akaza could have possibly have anticipated. Akaza stood in attention as he used destructive death disorder, attempting to match the attack of the flame Hashira. As he used flame breathing fourth form, blooming flame undulation. The attack was now able to land much harder. Akaza taking more damage than he had ever taken in his life. His healing factor allowed him to reform quickly. But before he could counter, Rengoku was already upon him as he used the third form, Blazing Universe. A spiral of fire, slashing away at Akaza once again. Akaza being sent back, he knew very well that this was not going to be easy for him. Venom was able to speak with Rengoku telepathically, sharing his knowledge, his experience, and something else that would prove to be crucial. The five Venom breathing forms. Rengoku asked how he was able to come up with such attacks. Hmm. Don't underestimate me, human. We symbiotes can be rather adaptive when we need to be. The two years I trained with that brat, I learned a good deal of your breathing forms and of your sword styles, and I developed one especially for me. You've seen what we can do, but now you have a chance to try it for yourself. Now let's show this demon what we are truly capable of. Rengoku would agree and he would start to implement venom breathing along with his flame breathing. In combination, he would use venom breathing second form long sword along with flame breathing second form rising scorching sun. The long sword using the symbiote was able to extend the length of the blade almost three to four times its original length. With flame breathing second form rising scorching sun, the combination of the two attacks was now emblazing the now elongated katana, sweeping over the area with an even greater degree, so farther that Akaza could not escape the attack even by creating distance. As a result, he would be hit once again taking damage, but Rengoku, he was far from done. 
Venom breathing. Third form. Dark frenzy. Flame breathing. First form. Unknown flame. The next combination of attacks would be far quicker than anything Akaza could have possibly have kept up with. The frenzy form allowed for Rengoku to move at an erratic pace, moving without any thought at all. This technique is very similar to the fourth lightsaber form used by Master Yoda, that being Makashi, a form of technique that allowed for quick and rapid pace. The beauty of this technique was moving in an erratic nature, moving in weird and unorthodox angles that were hard to predict or counter. Along with unknown flame, it was like being slashed over and over again by blades of fire from every direction. Akaza would find himself taking more and more damage. Despite his best efforts, Rengoku was finally able to gain the upper hand, knocking him back once more, forcing him to use more and more of his power in order to try to heal himself. As he slowly stood once again, he would turn back to face his enemy, knowing that he was going to have to finish this with his next move. He readied himself to use the destructive death annihilation type. Rengoku asked if he could use that technique. Venom warned that even though he was being healed, his body was not at 100%. If they attempted to use the attack that he wanted to use, he better make sure he finishes it. Rengoku nod in understanding as he took a very deep breath. Venom breathing, fifth form, double critical, flame breathing, historic art, ninth form, Rengoku blaze. The combination of the two strongest breathing attacks, with Venom breathing double critical, Rengoku as he took a deep breath would have the symbiote fill his lungs, holding in the air and putting him into a hyper state, a state where his senses, his strength, everything was amplified to the max. You could say that the double critical is very similar to the eight gates in how they work and how they function. For a brief moment, the human body is able to push itself to its absolute limit, enhanced by the strength of the symbiote. You could say that like the eight gates, it pushes the human body to its limits via breathing, going far beyond anything it should be capable of. However, the reason why it is called the double critical is because, like the eight gates, it is a double-edged sword. In exchange for this brief burst of power, it leaves the user almost useless once the time runs out. The time usually being three minutes. In combination with his most powerful breathing flame technique, it amplifies it to its highest degree. As Rengoku enhanced by the symbiote becomes that of the flame dragon itself, unleashing upon Akaza once more. The two would meet for the final time, another clash, a chance for a new start. As the two engage with one another once more, Akaza attempted to use his defense, but it was pointless. In one fell swoop, in one blazing strike, the demon lost his own head and his arms as his body fell limp to the ground. Akaza couldn't believe what had happened. 
He was in such shock that he didn't think that it could be possible. As the flame Hashira stood over him, he could feel the effects of the double critical starting to sink in. As he took one knee to the ground, Tandro and the others would run over to him quickly, laying him on the ground and allowing him to rest. Venom would explain that for the most part his internal organs were fine, but he advised against fighting at that high a level for a while. If he tried to go into another intense battle right off the bat, he'd probably just undo all of the healing that he had been given. And for that, Rengoku was grateful. Rengoku also looked to Tanjiro as Venom reassembled itself to him once again. He remarked that Tanjiro had great potential and that he expected great things from him in the future. As the sun was starting to rise, Akaza felt that this was going to be the end. That was until from out of the bushes themselves, a red tendril would emerge. The red tendril wrapping around the body of Akaza and pulling him back in. The others watched on in abject horror as they saw and heard a distinct screaming. The screams of someone who was experiencing his own hell. Tondro and the others weren't sure of what to think. They weren't sure of what to expect. There was nothing that they could do. As the sun had not fully risen yet, a man would come walking from out of the tree line. A man dressed in a blood red suit with a red top hat as he looked back at them with a smile. Tanjiro recognized him, that criminal that they had met a while ago, the one being taken by the police, the one that bit him on the hand. Well, well, well. The boy with the Hanafuda earring. You know, you got a lot of people trying to find you. Who the... Who are you? Oh, me? I'm nobody special. You might know me as... Cassidy. Cletus Cassidy. At your service. But we prefer a different name. They watched on as a red substance appeared on the shoulder. Nice to meet you, father. Venom would appear from Tanjiro's shoulder as well. Are you an offspring? <laughs> Indeed. Although I am grateful to you for giving me life. And on that note, I spare you this day. But do know that the next time we meet, things will not go so favorably for you. The sun is rising, and now we must bid you adieu. As they prepared to leave, Tandro, however, ran in anger. Rengoku wanted to tell him to stop, but right now he was in no condition to keep going. Just who the hell are you? The man simply turned back with a smile. We are carnage. They made their way into the darkness of the forest, disappearing into the shadows as the sun now rose anew over our heroes. The fight had been won and the day saved, 
the lives of those aboard the nightmare that was the Mugen train, now free. However, there was a new darkness making its way into the world. Even Venom was worried. If the demons had now gotten their hands on a symbiote, then this meant that the balance of power was about to change. And who would come out on top? That was something that they couldn't answer. Though for now, Tondro decided to look at the positives as his sister was stored safely back into her box, placed on his shoulders. They helped Rengoku make his way to Ahashira Station, where he could be cared for better. He thanked them for all of their efforts, and he would instruct Tandro to go to his home. There, he might be able to find the answers that he was looking for. With new determination, Tandro and his friends would set out once again, leaving the darkness of the Mugen train behind them. This concludes What If Tandro Had Venom, Demon Slayer Dark Fury the movie, Mugen Train. As always, if you're a fan of today's video and everything else that we have to offer at Power Core Productions and Podcastings, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for Monday as we continue Jujutsu Kaisen Curse of Daishi based on the Heroes of the Morphing Grid series, part 4. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.